started making jewelry as a means to have more um, dialogue and conversations about my work. So for it to travel with me is an easy and accessible way to talk about my interests and materials and methodologies um, in a yeah in a not so heavy-handed way. Yeah, it's got a nice you know, conversational dialogue that can come with the jewellery practice, which is, I guess, why I've continued to um, make these kinds of work, even though it's not necessarily my background education or profession as such. Yeah, it's still like a major part of how I work. My educational background was in sculpture, specifically, and in that time I used lots of assemblage and found materials, but with a particular focus on, like, um, sound and noise art and kind of, like, um, fracturing audibility in certain kinds of ways. Um, and yeah, when I had moved to Melbourne, I'd continued to make that work a little bit, but it more shifted to, because of the size of the studio space that I was working into, a lot of those things became a lot more reduced, or that's when I started making jewellery works. And I feel like, you know, both me wearing it and other people wearing it is a way to have uh, a discourse that is yeah, more related to people's like lived experience rather than um, the broader, I don't know, sphere of what people think the art world necessarily is. Um, so it c I feel like it can still carry a lot of the same conceptual concerns. Yeah. Do you see um, your identity as being part of your practice? Um, yeah, I see like there's a continuum between how I articulate myself and how my practice kind of operates. I see there's, um, yeah, definitely like there's been a positive feedback loop from seeing how I can exist in the world in certain ways and how my practice can exist or, you know, it seems like a kind of fun way to kind of like n draw together the like personal political kind of nexus of being an artist in different kinds of ways. And how did you find the transition from art school into the real world in terms of how easy it is to practice? Um, yeah, I found it quite, like both quite difficult and quite um, liberating in certain kinds of ways. I guess I was working from yeah, quite a small studio when I worked here. Um, I've worked uh, a little bit doing quite menial part-time jobs, but for the most part I've been on Centrelink and the Dole for the past 10 years to kind of support my practice. Um, and there's been, you know, little bits of money that come through, but I guess running an anti-capitalist practice means that it often doesn't, you know, return many funds, yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, those logistics have been really important in kind of pushing different methodologies of making too, like the, yeah, cross-current of, like, um, poverty and improvisation or, you know, what you're able to do with, like, less has been, like, a, yeah, an important part of how I've operated, yeah. I've reused, yeah, parts of work in other works, um, in certain kinds of ways, I guess there's uh, sometimes it seems like you know a material is kind of exhausted enough, and sometimes there's still like more potential for it to kind of um, be readapted, mutate, turn into another kind of like work or yeah um, material too. Yeah, for example, like I've reused lots of other bits from other people's artworks. Like this perspex dome was something that um, Charlie Sofo got manufactured. And then after he's used it, then I've re-articulated it in like one installation. Um, and yeah, it, like definitely I think has more potential to be used again. And are you yeah. drawn to certain materials? Yeah, for sure. There are definitely like certain material qualities that I'm attracted to. Definitely like um, synthetics or mineral kind of things, something that has um, both a uh, quite biological and quite, yeah, uh, manufactured kind of element to it. Um, particular kinds of transparency or reflectivity in the material are like um, things that I find interesting to like have friction against each other. Maybe different kind of materials flexibility, so like how you're able to bend it or move it or like change it through different kinds of processes. When is the point where you feel like um you can take the materials out of your studio and show them in a gallery context? Um, I guess I would be working with materials in a realm of like knowing that they might be leaving the studio. But um, I think it is, yeah, like 
as I was saying about this process of fermentation, of just like, you know, um, seeing, you know, when the energy is kind of enough with it, when it's like um, had some kind of transformation that can like lead it to be maybe robust enough to face the outside world. Um, yeah, but it's a tough question too. Like it's sometimes really hard to know when something is finished or not. Or a lot of my projects have been about um, kind of complicating a finished installation process or outcome that they will be kind of like tended to change slightly through the exhibition time frame as well. So I've been using um, the windows since I've moved into the studio quite a lot as both a semi-public site because it is visible from the street but from a great distance and as like a almost architectural membrane to the studio because it is this liminal inside outside space uh, there so at the moment there's um, some kind of adhesive sticker works on here and um, heat processed textiles which relate to the exhibition which is happening downstairs in the gallery of Gertrude Contemporary um, yeah so just like stretching out those exhibition spaces or having little kind of footnotes or um, other adjacent kind of work I think you know amplifies the scope for what the project can hopefully do. And do you have any advice for young artists maybe choosing to go to art school? Mm. I think it's important to follow your own research um, trajectory or you know be aware of your own autonomy. The institution can be there to support you in certain kinds of ways but for the longevity of your practice I think it's most important to be able to I don't know have an emotional or psychic uh, longevity for doing what you'd be wanting to do because yeah there's I guess uh, such an important thing to articulate what you actually want in the world not to be following any kind of institutional line as such. I'm just, yeah.